okay so last time what we did is we added an uh, a component inside our account object or in, inside the account detail page okay so from here i think this is the one we created list of contacts okay so when you click on this a list of contacts is getting loaded here okay so instead of doing that manually like when you have to click it should happen automatically as soon as the page loads okay so to do that we need one handler okay which is called onload handler okay so we need one onload handler okay which will be able to handle that event because when it when the page is loaded that is also an event like click is a method like on mouse over is an event just like that onload is also an event okay when the page is loaded something is supposed to happen okay so whenever the page will load we want to call one so on load so what this handler will do okay so this handler what this handler will do as soon as the page is load so on load an event is happened okay on load event happened so page is loaded so when the page is loading then it is going to call a javascript controller just like on click when the when we click on a button so we call a javascript uh, method right just like that when a on load is happening we will call a javascript controller and from the javascript controller we will call a apex controller okay so we will call apex controller apex co controller will do an soql and soql will give us some records that records we will give it back so we will set up a callback so callback and uh, that callback will return the soql query okay return the list and that list we will set up to our attribute so attribute will get that and then in the component we will display okay so we'll display that in the component okay and that we will display using iteration okay why do we use iteration because we have more than one uh, record to show okay so iteration is like it if you want to show a list or a table then in that case we use iteration okay okay so yesterday we did the uh, on click now we'll do a handler okay so what handler is so let me just quickly go ahead and try to okay so i'll just open the component if you want to check out what is the component that we have used what's the name of the component what you can do is you can just go and edit page okay and when you do edit page you'll come back to uh, this uh, lightning app builder when you come to our lightning app builder then you can just click on the component that you have created it will automatically tell you here on this side what is the name of that particular component okay so that component we put inside the list of accounts tab okay so we click on the list of accounts tab okay and inside this we have this part so when you click on this then it will tell you the name of the component which is demo account okay so we are going to open this demo account so control shift a okay or you can go to file and open lightning resource if you see control shift a is the shortcut to open this so you put control shift a and then you put demo account okay so we have a matching query here we'll just try to open the component okay okay so when we open the component then what we will do is we need one handler here okay so below the attribute what we will do is we will put one aura handler okay and this name of the uh, we have to there are certain attributes that you have to define first is the name of the handler so the name of the handler is init so it's an init handler which is happening when the page is loaded or it is getting initialized okay and then we have another uh, couple of attributes like value so all that we will we can check out the syntax from the documentation okay so on or in it handler lightning okay. so we can check this out okay. 
okay so we just have to use one value and then we have to use one action okay so value value we have to use value should always be initialized to this okay it should always be like this this is the syntax that means we are calling the we are calling when the page is loading okay so here we have to give this this you have to remember okay so value should we will also always give this and the action that we want this page to whenever this page load loads that time whatever action we want that action we will give here so we will put action equals to whatever action we want to give okay let's say here we have already defined one action on click so on click of this we are trying to do that okay like on click we have a button uh, okay we have put one button okay on click of this this action is getting handled so instead of that we'll just put here directly my action that's it okay and once we do that we are all set okay so whenever this page is loaded this handler will come into picture and when this page is getting loaded so this this will call and this action will be called so action will come to our javascript controller okay so c dot my action c means controller we are coming to my action function here okay so my action is getting called and from here we are setting up an action so this action is going to set up a callback on this particular method so my method so this method is coming from where this method is coming from this controller controller demo helper okay so we can open this control plus o will open the class okay and the class directory so here we can open demo helper class so when we open this demo helper class here we are calling apex method okay and our name is getting on so we can remove the system.debug or we can check it out if, if it's getting called or not on load okay so this method is getting called and the callback will set the account list attribute to whatever response we get from the apex method okay so once we have done that that action will be enqueued okay once that is done then everything should be good to go okay now let's see if this is uh, this is working or not so how we'll check if this page is working or not so on load of this page okay automatically it should show us okay so we don't need the button anymore so what we will do is we'll hide this button as of now okay so icon is fine all this is fine we just need to remove this lightning button so we will hide this button because we don't need this button anymore okay so i'll save this and now i will go back here so the page is refreshed okay so i'll just go to open any account records and let's see what happens so we already have account record open and when we go to list of accounts tab okay so this is still showing the old one so maybe the page is not refreshed so I'll refresh it once again okay I'm going to go to a list of accounts. Now the list of account is getting displayed. Okay, so here we did not click on anything. It automatically came. Okay, how did that happen? So whenever the page was loaded, that time the Apex class was called and the Apex class has returned us the list of records and we are displaying that. Okay, so when you want something like this to happen, okay, when you want uh, something to happen on load, in that time you will be using this handler okay and this init handler you have to use this name you can give anything okay but this value should always be this okay so this syntax you have to remember okay and the action is the javascript action that you are trying to do so i did not do anything i just put the same action here okay that with the action that happened on click i just put the action in the handler okay is that is that is that clear everybody okay Okay. okay okay now after this what we are going to see is we are going to see a very very uh, handy thing 
very very handy tool that Salesforce has provided to us. So we have something called has record ID. Okay, force colon has record ID. Okay, this force colon has record ID. I said that I'll cover this later. So what this force colon has has record ID will do. Okay, if you have this force colon has record ID in the component in the attribute of the aura component. Okay, so this will always be in the aura components attribute implements implements equals to force colon has record ID. So we have something called implements equals to force colon has record ID. Okay, so as the name suggests has record ID. So this will give us the record ID of the current page. Okay, we don't have to uh, retrieve it from the record or retrieve it from the SOQL or retrieve it from the database. Automatically Salesforce will give us the record ID. Okay, as of now, if you come back to our component here, okay, right now, if you can see, we are in one account, which name is test, some test other is there. So this ID is there, this 15 digit ID is there. This ID Salesforce will automatically give us. What will be the use of this ID? The, using this ID, we can retrieve any related records or any any anything related to this particular ID. We already have that ID. Okay, so using that, we can pass it to maybe another uh, another class or another method. Using that, we can retrieve the information related to this record. Okay, who is the owner? What all other information? Whatever information that is there related to this particular record, we can get that using this ID. Okay, so you don't have to uh, do anything to get the record of the current of the current uh, record. Get the record ID of the current record. So this will work for any component. Okay, any uh, object that you put that component in. Okay, let's say if this component was there inside a contact, you created one for opportunity, right? So if you have put it inside the opportunity page, so that has record ID will give you the record ID of that particular opportunity. Okay, so using that opportunity, you can get the related list, like you can get uh, maybe you can get uh, what account it is connected to. Okay, and you can display all those things in the component. Okay, so how that works, it is very simple. So whenever you use force colon has record ID Salesforce will automatically put one attribute like this Okay, Salesforce will already create a aut uh, attribute automatically and the name of the attribute will be Record ID Okay, it will be called record ID. So if you display that record ID somewhere, let's say if I display that so it will automatically I'll just uh, Provide you like this. So if you create a rec uh, uh, an attribute or a attribute and the name of the attribute will be record ID okay record ID and the type of the will be string okay okay so this Salesforce will automatically create you don't have to do okay and the value will automatically be set by Salesforce in this attribute so we don't need this Okay, I was just showing that what will happen. Okay, so I'll comment this as of now. Okay, now let's try to see if we can use that record ID or not. Okay, so we'll just try to display it here. V dot record ID. Okay, so this is the using the uh, formula using this expression. We can use the attribute name. Okay, so we can display the value. So if I display the value like this, let me see if that value is coming over here or not. So I'll just refresh the page. Okay. And now if I go back to our list of accounts, so that record ID should display somewhere at the top. Okay. So if you see that record ID has displayed here, okay. So this is the same record ID which is coming here. Okay. You see, this is the same record ID. So it is giving us the record ID. So using this record ID, you can retrieve any of the information related to this particular record. 
okay okay so this one is this clear for everyone like the record id how to use record id Okay. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. So there is an attribute which will be created by Salesforce automatically. That name of the attribute will be record ID, and you can use that record ID for uh, for any other purpose. Now, if you want, you manually also create. You can also manually create record ID. Okay, that doesn't matter. Okay. Now this record ID will be still the same. You can also manually create. Salesforce will put that in the this record ID. Okay. So we don't need to actually do that. Now record ID. Okay, now let's say if we want to pass this somewhere in the JavaScript. So in the JavaScript, what we can do in the JavaScript, we can also get that value. So I'll just put one alert. Oh, I'll, I don't want to disturb this. Hmm. Or what I can do. Okay, okay. So here I will change this button. Now we already have a button. So what I will do is I will just change this button a little bit. Okay, in this my action, I'll just uh, get record ID. I'll just create one method. Okay, JavaScript controller method, and this method I will create here. Okay, so I'll put record ID, and then I will write one function. Okay, and in this function, I'll do one component, an event, and helper. Okay. And from here, what I will do is I will just display one alert. And in this alert, I will just write component dot get. I'll just try to get the attribute, okay? Get the record ID attribute and see if I can use that attribute or not. Okay, so I'll just do one component dot get. And here I'll put v dot record ID. Record ID. Okay, so I'll just alert the record ID. That's it. Okay, and let me see if that is going to work or not. Or I'll, I'll also change the this label here. So I'll say something like show record ID. Okay, so this should be displayed. Now if I just refresh this. Okay. So sometimes the refresh happens, but the change is not reflected at, at one refresh. So try to refresh it more than one times. Okay, that happens in Lightning. Okay, because it takes some time to load. That is okay. So you can just refresh it again if the if the change is not reflected. So as of now, it is not showing our button. That means it, the change has not happened. So I'll just refresh it once again. Okay. Okay, so now that is getting displayed <clears throat> and when I click on this, our alert should be generated, but there is one error here. Okay, component is not defined. Get record ID. So our action is getting failed. Get record ID component is not defined. So we are getting an error in the line number 23, get record ID. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let us see what is the error here. Get record ID on click. This looks fine. Okay. So uh, this button should be called. So let me create that button. Get record ID. Function event. That component dot get. Oh 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 sorry. See, usually what the, this will by default be component. So you have to use component dot get. Whatever this this parameter will always have the component. So using the get method, you can get the attributes. So here what we can do is we can use com dot get. If we had written like a complete component, then we could have written like that. Okay. 
so this is not something fixed you can also use whatever you want okay but this particular parameter will always have the component okay it will get the whole of the component okay okay so what it was showing that component is not defined because we had written cm com okay that is why the component was not defined okay so now when we refresh this okay we go to list of accounts okay now let's try to click on this and this is still throwing an error that means it has not refreshed so we'll refresh it once again okay now we have defined the component so this should be okay okay we go to list of accounts now we click on this now our record id is getting displayed okay so that means we are able to get the record id in the javascript method also now most of the times what we will do is we will pass this record id to the controller and using this controller we will display something related to the record now let's say if you have a requirement that you want to show the list of opportunities you don't want this uh, related list which is there from the out of box if they want you to cre create a new tab which will show you only a list of uh, or, uh, or list of uh, opportunities which is connected to this particular account okay or any other query that you want to do or uh, any other information related to that so let's say if you have a requirement that the details page they don't want the out of box detail page instead of that they want you to create a list like this and using which you have to display on your own so how will you display that then you need for this you need the record id so using the record id you will just retrieve the fields from the apex class and then you can get all these fields okay okay so how to, how to do that we'll just quickly check it out okay so the same pattern here also will follow whatever we did here also so instead of on load event instead of uh, so he will create another on, on load event using that we will call the javascript controller and then we will call apex controller so in the apex controller we'll do an soql query we'll use the record id we'll use something like let's say select name id active from account or whatever other fields that we want okay from account where name equals to this so instead of this name what we'll do in where id equals to we'll give that id here okay so our record id will pass here okay so everybody knows about bind variables in sql query we have bind variables you guys know about bind variables yes no maybe no bro i don't know actually bind variables i don't know mm -hmm. okay okay so what are bind variables let me just quickly show you okay so in srinath you also not not aware of bind variables ah uh, no bro i don't know okay 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 fine don't so remember, okay okay so what are bind variables let's say if you define one variable here okay so let's say we are passing the record oh, oh, i'll not disturb this method so i'll just take this method and i'll just make a copy of this method let me just come down here or i'll show in the anonymous window only okay so let's say i have so what i will do is i will pass that record id okay to this apex class or i'll create a method using that that method will receive one parameter for the record id okay so i'll get something like i'll create some method like uh, maybe public static okay list so because it is returning a list or instead of list it is re it, it is returning a single record so i can return just one account okay and then i'll have method name let's say get account okay and this will receive one parameter which is a string and this string is id it is going to receive an id okay and then i will compose the method let me just expand this a little bit 
okay okay so uh, we have another string uh, we have this created this method so this will receive one id that id is nothing but record id okay now i will compose one uh, soql query so i want to return so i'll return that that account which is related to, to the record id okay so i'll return uh, select name comma whatever field that you want to return maybe phone or what other fields we have on comma fax whatever fields we have and maybe active this is a custom field so whatever fields we want to retrieve we can retrieve from account okay where id equals to now instead of giving the id like statically instead of putting the id here manual like myself i don't want to put that static id because every time i'll retrieve this method it will give me the same id and give me the same records i don't want to do that i want to populate that dynamically using this id for that we need variable because variables value will always be changing whatever record id will come into so that id will be passed here okay so if you see this list of account is showing us one record id right so if you come to any other record if you come to right now we are in the te this test account so let's say if we come under sony pictures account okay now if we just ref go to our list of accounts here okay and when we show the record id it is showing its id it will not show that id it will always show the current record id so so uh, so this record id is coming dynamically right so we want to give that dynamic value here so here what we will use we will use one bind variable so bind variable is like a variable that you can use inside the query also so you just have to give one colon and you have to give the name of the variable that is it okay so here it will dynamically check what is the record id and that id will be generated here and it will query according to the id so we'll always get the fields of the current record okay so this just imagine that I have passed that uh, ID here somewhere. So ID equals to, I'll just put that here just to show that this is going to work. Okay. So let's say we have created one, um, but how will I do? Okay. Okay. Fine. So I have one in string ID equals to this and I'm calling that method. Let's say uh, get account and I'm passing this ID there. Okay so all this one i will put down here okay now let me try to execute this i am not sure if it's going to work in anonymous or not because we have not created any class let me try to execute the highlighted part looks like it has worked okay so now oh i did not display it right get account id so i can put it inside system dot debug to display that value now let's say if i go ahead and execute the highlighted part okay now let me see what happens okay so this is going to work okay so what we have done is we have just use this variable this is a local variable anyways the parameters are always a local variable okay so that local variable we are getting and this variable we are using inside the query so if you use any variable inside the query those variables are called bind variables okay so this is a bind variable okay because generally as of now what whatever we guys have done is that we are using some kind of value inside here we would have given the id dynamically inside a colon inside uh, quotes but here it is coming from the variable so that is why it's called a bind variable that you are inserting a variable in the query okay this is very very handy okay this is very useful okay because we are not hard coding the hard coding stuff okay so we, we should never hard code things inside our code okay it should always be dynamic because if you hard code it will always be static it will always give you the same result okay but we don't want to do that now let's try to bring this into use and let's see if this is getting used inside our component okay so inside of our component what we'll do is we'll try to create another tab or 
instead of creating another tab we can quickly create some fields here at the top using that field we can display the record okay 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 so as of now everything is clear guys following Srinath, it's clear. It's clear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, so what I'll I'll have to I'll have another session, guys, at seven o'clock. Uh, so, uh, Srinath and Srikant, you can. Shrikant Sandhi Reddy, you can drop off after some time. Okay, I'll just tell you. Or if you want, you can continue also because this is like a a, a session which is in the beginning stages. So just for today, okay. So don't worry, we'll have our regular classes. So just for today, I have to cover something. Okay. okay. So that we will cover yeah. today. Okay. So no, no. yeah. Okay. 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 So let me quickly create one method. Okay. So I'll put one aura enabled here. Aura enabled. And then we will add this method. Okay, so we will add this method directly. You can add this here. Okay, so I'll remove the extra line. Okay, so I can close this anonymous window out. Okay, so from our account, blah blah blah. Okay, this looks fine. So in our aura handler, okay, all we have to do is we have to call this particular method. Okay, when we call this method, all the record uh, fields will be displayed automatically. And this ID we have to also pass. So yesterday we did not see how to pass the parameter. Okay, here we have already only called the action and we have called the setback. We have not called the parameter. Okay, so if you go to server side controller, server side controller, okay, in lightning, we will get the correct syntax how we have to do. Okay, so server side action okay okay so all we have to do is we have to set some parameters so we need another method so instead of using this get record ID to just display that so I will remove this alert okay so from here I'll be calling that apex method okay. so for that first we have to define one action so variable action equals to so we have to use our component component dot get and we have to get the method the apex method so see dot name of the apex method so the method name is get account so this account we have to bring here so now we have got a connection between this apex uh, this javascript controller and our apex method so once we have got that action then we will use action dot set before that we have to uh, set the parameters also okay so we'll check out how to set the parameters Okay, so here they have not shown us. So it's just we have to use set params. Okay, so action dot set params. This one you have to use. So that day I showed you guys that uh, what we have to do is we have to do action dot set params. Okay, and then inside this bracket we have to give another bracket, and in the left side we have to give the parameter name of our apex class. So here the name of the parameter is id. Okay, so we have to map that id with whatever parameter we want to get so that parameter is record ID this record ID we want to pass to that particular method so instead of putting it in a, an alert we will put it in a variable variable ID equals to this we will put okay so and this ID will pass here or instead of uh, like creating a confusion between the name so I can make something like maybe rec ID okay and this we will pass that is it so our parameter is set okay that that is all we have to do so now we have added the parameter in our apex class and that parameter see here also they are doing it dynamically component dot get so that component dot get I have already done and I have saved in a variable instead of putting this whole thing here to confuse you guys so I'll just uh, I have done it like this okay so now I have set one parameter also action dot set parameters okay so using this I am setting the parameter of the apex method so this parameter I am setting this get account methods parameter I am setting here okay just to make sure that this is correct yep this is correct okay so the id okay okay okay, okay. set on a small, small request yes 
Can you please follow the hashtag that you that syntax Shelly? Sorry? Uh, can you please follow the uh, syntax which is in the document for initially to avoid the confusion? Okay. Uh, the document it is showing some component or something syntax. This one? Uh, this one means about. Can you please follow as this syntax? You want me to follow this syntax, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Without creating that variable or not. Okay, okay. Oh, this is creating confusion. Yeah. Okay, okay. So <laughs> what I can do yeah. is I can also. Instead, we will follow as this, Saba. Okay, okay. No problem. No problem. We can do that also. So. Then we get uh, that. So I will just copy this and I'll put it here. I'll just comment this. Okay. Okay, so we are getting the component and component is what we are the, getting the attribute and then we are passing it to the ID. Okay, so once we have the ID set, now we have to set up a callback. Okay, so we do action dot set callback and then we have to use here the same syntax we have to use. Okay, you can follow the same syntax. This comma function response Okay, and after response, we have to set the variable here component dot set. So for that, we need one attribute which can save the account values also. So we need one attribute or a attribute name equals to let's say ACC or ACC record. Okay, and type equals to what should be the type? any clue it is going to hold account type of records right so we are going to give account here okay okay any confusion no sir okay okay so we are going to set that component inside so v dot will take the name of this attribute attribute is acc record we'll set that here and we will put one comma and we put the whatever response value is there response dot get return value okay so we'll call this function so we'll get that and after that all you have to do is we have to do one nq action We'll put, put dollar sign a dot e n e n q u e u e action okay and we'll put that action that we have created the action variable that we have created that we'll put here okay so all these these we have to these things we have to add okay so just to check that this method is getting called i'm going to put one alert here and we can remove this alert later so acc record or something uh, get record ID called okay okay so looks good to me so what I'm going to do is now we have to use that inside our component to display the values okay so instead of putting a without record ID I will also put one here or we'll just check if that method is getting called or not okay because we have already put one alert so that should be fine so if we'll say no component named or a attribute i've made one spelling mistake okay so we already have an alert so that should be calling our method and we can also put one debug log here to check if that apex method is getting called or not so we'll put one system dot dot debug uh, get account get account called okay we'll save this okay now let me try to refresh this but one thing i have not done is i have not called this particular method from our aura handler 
so aura handler is the one which is handling the initialization automatically it, it is initializing right i mean it is on load of the page it is calling something so on load of the page we are calling this action but we are not calling this javascript method okay so somebody has to call this javascript method right so what we will do is we'll call it from our my action method okay or if we change that or if we change the action to our get record id then this method will be called on load of the page okay we can do in this way also okay so let's see if that method is getting called or not so we come back to our account we just refresh the page okay so let me see if that page has refreshed Okay, we go to list of accounts so it is still showing us a button that means it has not refreshed yet because it's still calling the old method so refresh it once again go to list of accounts so get record id is getting called and if i come back here they should generate one debug log also so if you see the timing 7 11 so yeah this is the current log so in this log if i come here i go to debug only and here i should get the message so our apex method is getting called so whatever settings we have done that is correct so the connection is working okay now from this connection all i have to do is just return this particular so i have already returned it so i have to use this attribute somewhere so from this attribute if i give one let's say uh, record id equals to so this is my record id and then i have to give let's say account name equals to this formatting we'll do later so as of now we can display the value v dot how will we display value in this record it we are getting the current record and we put dot and we put name okay just like this so we can also use account what other field we retrieved uh, we retrieve phone and we retrieve fax so that phone and also fax we can show here okay so phone equals to we'll put v dot uh, acc or we'll oops, acc record dot phone okay We'll copy this thing and we'll put fax equals to fax okay now if we save this and now if we come back and if we refresh our refresh our account okay just to be sure we'll refresh it once again okay i load okay now we go to our tab so get record id is getting called okay so but we still don't see those values in here so has it refreshed okay Okay, this looks fine okay okay so that is getting displayed so i'll just format a little bit i'll just put one break here okay just to come to the next line okay and this break i'll give after every line okay i'll refresh it once again okay one so we go to our tab list of accounts so method is getting called it did not refresh yet
so are you guys following whatever we have discussed till in the class today yes sir okay okay good i've recorded yeah i've recorded anyways so i'll go ahead and share it to you guys in the same drive okay in the google drive i will upload okay sir okay Thank you, sir. Uh, break, 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 break. Refresh is not happening. bro break is in html5 right we are not mention doc type no here we have used break right see here you, we have used break that break has worked work okay okay so maybe we are not using any dev maybe that's why or yeah okay so now this time it has refreshed see sometimes it happens that it does not load the maybe because of cache memory or something so now it has refreshed and the record id is coming and the account name is coming account phone number is coming so just like that you can create the whole detail page you can create sections also you can create and you can show so it was pretty simple i mean we just had to get the record id we got the record id we retrieved it from the apex class and we got the value so just like this if we do the formatting for the lightning okay so we can make it editable also all that we can see in the future classes so our basic idea was to get the values so we have got the values now whatever formatting we want we can do it that's up to us okay so so far all clear and unless you guys have any questions we can wind up for the day no questions sir we will practice today this sir yes so what i want you guys to uh, do uh, what you can do is in the account page okay just create one small component and put that component somewhere here okay that should look like let me just quickly show you oh, okay so okay create one small component okay. in that component this you put inside the account okay so this is the account page okay you get the current record id and you pass it to this component here you create one icon and here you create another icon okay so when you click on this particular icon let's say this icon is something like this there's one person so when you click on this icon now you have to display a list of accounts uh, sorry dis display a list of opportunity related to this account okay and here you have something called contact maybe two three people are there so when you click on this then you should display list of all the contacts related to this account okay not just any contact it should be related to this account so as account is parent for uh, parent for uh, account uh, opportunity as well as contact so parent by default is a parent for opportunity as well as contact so you have a related list okay so shrikant i have already uh, taught you how to get the query inner query and get the child records okay so you can use that yes. here yeah just a hint you can use that to get the related records okay so you okay. get the related records and here you give the opportunity you display a list of all the opportunities which is there in that particular account and here you can display all the contacts so that should happen on click of this and when you so okay and when you click on this only this should display this should disappear just the button should stay okay but this should disappear and when you click on this only this should disappear so it is like a tab functionality that you are creating okay 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 so try to do this how to uh, how you can cross check whether it is working or not if so if it's uh, working or not how you can cross check you can just come to the related list okay in the details you can just come to the related list here one contact is shown right so on click of our button it should show one contact because one contact is there in this particular account okay and if any opportunity is there that opportunity should display okay so you can edit the page and you can put that component somewhere inside okay okay okay, okay. So okay try to achieve that it's uh, 
if you get any issues let me know if you are not able to achieve that uh, click method and all that is fine try to achieve the main functionality like retrieving the uh, related records okay and that should happen on load of the page okay okay okay, okay. so okay. whatever i've taught so far you can implement that and you can you should be able to get it okay if you have okay. any issues then you can let me know okay 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 and that's okay. it for the day guys uh, unless you have any questions we can uh, you can drop off okay okay thank you okay then no problem okay. so just to okay i'll stop the recording